everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about designing structures to service loads and what they actually mean to a structure. Designing to service loads is quite different from designing to ultimate or factored loads. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why and offer some examples to go with it. So what are ultimate loads? Ultimate loads are essentially factored loads. And this is what you use to design for strength or equilibrium. In the Eurocode, it's very often that you factor up the loads in combinations for strength and equilibrium using a dead load factor of say 1.35 and a live load of 1.5. These are the typical factors, but different combinations utilize different factors and you'll need to refer to the code to know what to use in different situations. So an example of strength and where you'd need to use factored up loads is say when you're designing a beam for bending moments and shear forces. An example of equilibrium is when you're designing a structure for stability. Say you want to check if a structure is going to topple over, say for example a retaining wall. In the design of a retaining wall, the self-weight actually benefits the design, so you actually want to factor down the dead weight and factor up the live load or the lateral forces applied to the retaining wall. So what are service loads or service conditions where you need to use service loads? Service conditions are something like when you're designing for deflections, crack widths or dynamics. I think the biggest difference between ultimate and serviceability loads is ultimate loads are codified whereas serviceability like equations and limits aren't necessarily all codified. Say for example you're designing a steel beam and you want to check that the deflection doesn't exceed the span over 250, 360 or 500. And these are very typical span limits but these aren't necessarily codified and I think this is the big difference between ultimate and service limit states. The ultimate limit state you've got the code and you follow the equation and you make sure that the design forces are less than the resistance of the member. Whereas in serviceability design you need to kind of use a bit more engineering judgment and look at the situation. Just because the deflection passes the limit doesn't necessarily mean that it passes the situation. Sometimes you really have to think about the holistic situation of what your beam for example is designing and design it accordingly, not just purely look at these deflection limits. So take this example, which is very commonly found in residential buildings, where the client say wants a really big opening and an extension to fit in some bifold doors. So right off the bat, big opening, you're probably gonna need a steel beam to span that opening. And you can quite easily work out the loads, design the beam and design your deflections for span of a 250, 360, 500. You know, very, very easy to work out and design the beam for. But if you just did that, it's probably not actually going to work properly because you haven't thought that bifold doors, the detail is actually going to be top hung. So it's going to be top hung, supported off the main steel beam. What you also need to know about bifold doors is the deflection limits on, on them is very, very small. Sometimes, depending on the manufacturer, the limit or the tolerance of movement is only about five mil. Okay, so let's say that this beam or opening was six meters long and you were designing to normal design limits or deflection limits. So that would be a 24 mil deflection, up to 24 mil deflection. And then let's say you actually spec the beam which deflected say 23 mil, but that comes in less than 24. So it passes the design, but because you haven't thought that the bifold door can only accommodate some movement, say up to five to seven mil, if that beam deflects more, that could effectively crush the bifold door and break, rendering your design not working, even though that you've actually designed it to the right limits, because you haven't looked at the sort of what it's supporting and the overall condition, that means that it's failed. So another real life condition, but this time on a much smaller scale, and it's not even a true structure, I essentially built a, um, a table using a spare or an old oak wooden top and I basically screwed in some really cheap um, metal legs from Screwfix. And basically when I made this table I knew that it was going to be a little bit wobbly um, because there's no bracing, there's no stability, but I kind of thought that it would be okay, like usable, but in reality it really really wasn't usable. It was so wobbly that um, kind of when I was trying to record videos on it or just write stuff it was just so shaky footage was unusable. Sometimes unusable doesn't mean that the structure is going to fall down. In this case, in this table, this table is what I've called unusable, but it's not going to fall down. It's far from falling down, but it isn't serving its purpose. You know, I need this table 
to serve me so that it doesn't wobble or I can use it and for it to be stable enough and not wobbly enough that you know if I'm recording videos on it or if I'm just writing on the table it's not going to shake so much that what I'm writing is just not legible anymore. I'll be using this crappy table in a future video when I talk about sort of stability and bracing systems so make sure you remember to like and subscribe smash that notification bell so that you get notified for when I actually post that video and that is serviceability in a nutshell have you ever walked on a bridge and felt that bounce that is dynamics and that's the kind of comfort feeling which we as structural engineers need to account for and design for in our structures these are the kind of things that we need to consider when we design a structure or a building you know besides strength and stability we really have to consider the dynamics deflections cracks all these things which may not necessarily cause a collapse or a really huge structural failure but it's definitely not good if you allow these things to go above the sort of normal limits or what is the bare requirements sometimes these serviceability effects can actually cause damage to the structure even though they're meant to be service and mainly cosmetic or comfort sometimes these effects can actually cause major structural damage even in the eyes of the public serviceability problems is not a good look for any engineer or any project which you've worked on famously the tacoma narrows bridge failed in essentially a serviceability condition um, and that was resonance even though at the time resonance was kind of known it wasn't fully understood and even in to this day there are certain aspects of dynamics which aren't that well understood the tacoma narrows bridge was a really famous example of when you know the design of dynamics caused a really really bad structural failure so to end this video serviceability effects and loads are just as important and just as critical as ultimate loads such as designing for strength and stability don't forget to check it when you're designing your structures and also don't forget that sometimes serviceability is not necessarily all codified and it requires a certain amount of engineering judgment Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have and you wanted to watch further videos, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.